you find the access tunnel, hidden within a natural cave a mile off the main road. You don't need a keycard, the door is ajar. It smells here, it smells like them. Hopefully they've moved on. You've come so far already, you can't turn back now. There is a slick trail that leads from the cave entrance and into the depths of the site. If it's blood or shit, or something that smeared off one of those things, you cannot tell. You make a point to avoid it. You're still receiving the distress signal and only started broadcasting yesterday. Whoever it is, you pray they're still alive. Your footsteps echo throughout empty corridors. Each footfall sounds for all the world like a dozen, as if you're not treading through the dark alone. Elevator is down, so you take the stairs, ending on floor B5, Keter holding. You pass several empty containment chambers. The horrors they once held are long gone, if you're lucky. The trail takes you to an office, branching off the main hall, the source of the signal. The door is cracked open, but stuck. You plant your feet, push with all your might. Something skitters out of one of the rooms to your left, around the corner, before you can get a good look at it. Your first thought is, dog. It was on the ceiling, though. You take refuge in the room, slam the door behind you. It's dark here. You're safe. You take off your jacket and head wrap. It'd be a damn shame to die from something like hypothermia after all that's happened. The sole operating emergency light rotates in its casing, casting a pale orange glow across the room every other second. It's as if the room itself had a pulse. There's shelving haphazardly placed behind the door, a barricade. You scan the room, Soiled clothes, half-eaten food, despite the presence of an adjoining restroom, there is excrement in a bucket in the corner. A pneumatic chamber on the northern wall would have been delivering consumables to the occupant. The trail terminates in the corner of the room, forming a sick puddle. You spot three pharmacy bottles. Further inspection reveals them to be various opioids. They're all empty. There's a desk in the corner, with a computer atop it. Approaching the terminal, you can clearly see the blinking light of the power button. You take a seat. Turn it on. The following files have been classified top secret by order of the administrator. General Notice zero. Zero 01 Alpha. Alpha. In order to prevent knowledge of SCP-001 from being leaked, several slash no false SCP-001 files have been created alongside the true files slash files, or files concerning the nature of SCP-001, including a decoy slash decoys, are protected by a medical agent designed to immediately cause cardiac arrest and any non-authorized personnel attempted to access the file. Revealing the true nature slash nature of SCP-001 to the general public is cause for execution. Except as required under Warning. Any unauthorized personnel accessing this file will be immediately terminated through very little pneumatic kill agent. Continued access to this file without proper pneumatic inoculation will result in immediate cardiac arrest, followed by death. You have been warned. Continue to life signs confirmed. Removing safety interlocks. Loading.
You hear footsteps outside the door. Loading. Every first step comes down heavy. Loading. The second drags behind it. Loading. Loading. A dark shape blots out the light, streaming in through the slit between the floor and the doorway. Authenticating. You tense up, Authenticating. waiting with bated breath, praying it will pass. Please wait. You damn the deafening thumping of your heart for betraying your position. Please wait. The shadow recedes. You breathe a sigh of relief, just as the screen comes to life. Opening file. Automated secure system notification. There has been an error in retrieving the current iteration of the SCP-1 file. You are currently viewing revision hash 3. Access file. SCP-001 revision 3 slash 12. Revision 3 slash 12 updated 1312 days ago. Item SCP-001. Object class... Polyon. Special Containment Procedures Due to its nature, SCP-001 cannot be contained. Survivors of the SCP-001 event stationed within secure facilities are to remain in contact with one another. Personnel are encouraged to attempt to reach Site-19 by any means at their disposal. Personnel with knowledge as to the whereabouts of the O5 Council are to relay this information to the Administrator. Survivors attempting to travel outdoors must fully cover their bodies in protective clothing, preferably several layers. Travel by foot should be limited as much as possible. Cities and man-made structures in general provide the greatest protection. Formerly wooded areas should be circumvented, Travel by air is preferable above all other methods. Personnel exposed to SCP-001 are to be considered lost. Compromised personnel are to be abandoned. Euthanization is not to be attempted. Collective instances of SCP-001-A that are of formidable size are to be avoided at all costs. Conductive electrical weapons have proven partially effective at immobilizing instances and may be used for self-defense. Incendiary weapons work as well. Cryonic munitions are the most effective thus far. Testing has revealed that SCP-001-A is relatively safe to consume. This is only to be considered as a last resort in the absence of other options as SCP-001-A may reconstitute within the digestive system. Only small portions should be consumed at any time to prevent blockage. Personnel stationed at Site-19 are to pursue research concerning off-world colonization. Shuttles must be constructed as to not allow light to penetrate the interior. To those of you with families, or, God forbid, children, I am deeply, deeply sorry. You must push on. Do not let their deaths be in vain. We do still have time. Humanity may still have a future. Come to Site-19. We need all the hands we can get. Learn to embrace the darkness, friends. Fear the light. Description SCP-001 is the designation given to the sun after an event on resulting in around 6.8 billion casualties within the first 24 hours. The SCP-001 effect does not seem to result from exposure to ultraviolet rays, but rather light in the visual spectrum. The effect is similarly present in moonlight. Upon contact with visible light produced by the sun, living organisms liquefy at the point of contact, with the effect spreading until the entire organism is converted. 
Visually, this is reminiscent of melting wax. The time this takes is largely dependent on the level of exposure and the size of the organism. Despite this restructuring, at no point do living organisms perish. Upon completion, these organisms, SCP-001-A, take on a gelatinous consistency. Motile organisms will attempt to orient themselves in a fashion reminiscent of their previous form, to varying degrees of success. Flora typically remain physically inert, yet are still capable of photosynthesis, and still produce oxygen. Organisms capable of flight lose the capability to do so. Fauna remains sentient, and display behavior that parallels their non-anomalous counterparts when not absorbed into a collective instance. Humans retain a modicum of sapience and memory. Biological anomalies exposed to SCP-001 are affected in the same manner. It seems that exposure nullifies any previously expressed anomalous characteristics. Due to their composition, instances of SCP-001-A that make contact with one another may combine and blend at the molecular level. This does not seem to cause any pain or distress to the instances, though the resulting bulk can inhibit movement. Since the SCP-001 event, most instances have congregated into such collectives, which seem to possess no maximum volume. The resulting biomass is an amorphous and chaotic. The competent organisms will shift between a full to semi-liquid state. Limbs and bodies will periodically rise from within the mass for a short duration before deteriorating and being subsumed by another life form. Collective instances will locomote by using their appendages in tandem to carry their mass. Larger instances will form a pseudopod from their constituent life forms and drag themselves about in a manner similar to amoeba. Opening attached audio file. A harsh static lashes out of the speakers when you open the file. It disturbs the stillness of the room, catches you off guard, and quickens your heart's pace. There's some handling noise as the recorder adjusts their microphone. A brief moment of silence passes, and then... <laughs> this is Dr. Logan Igoda. Level, um... Three. Researcher. Due to Site 46's possession of several communicable info hazards, we have. We have been cut off from the rest of the network, uh. under blackout protocol. As such, I will be updating this as we come across new information. On the bright side, we are actually still receiving transmissions from a few sites. A good number of personnel have made it, it seems. Some are planning to make a break for 19. Some are trying to fight the dash. Some, like us, are simply biding their time. Our sight is sealed for the time being. We are not ready for the journey. At least, not yet. We experienced a containment breach a few days ago. One of the higher maintenance humanoids broke loose. Son of a bitch compromised containment on half a half a dozen keters and ran off. They don't make it more than five feet from the tunnels before collapsing into a soup. I uh, I watched it happen on the cams. It didn't take long for them to get back up. Much better. Not exactly a, exactly a designated smoking area, but what the hell, right? <coughs> Commander Anand suited up and went 
to town on them the next day, tried to drive them off. It didn't turn out very well, poor bastard. But we did learn a thing or two, at least. There's only a few of us left here. I'm holed up in one of the offices. Jerry and Director Phillips are somewhere in the barracks. Clyde and a few D's locked themselves in the armory with Ari. I should really see how he's doing. Hey, hon. How are you holding up down there? Oh, I'm doing just fine, Poopsykins. I want you to know I love you bunches. <laughs> who, who, knock it off and put her on, damn it. I need to speak with him. Babe, what's wrong? Uh, uh, n nothing, nothing. I just wanted to check in real quick. I'm fine, babe, really. I can take care of myself. No, no. I know, I know that. I can't help it, though. I know coming here was never easy for you. And with everything going on, I... Hey, you told me you quit smoking. Oh, uh, no. No, of course not. I, I mean, I did. I, I did stop. I don't think I'm the one you need to worry about. I'm staying clean. I haven't even thought of touching amnestics in months. Trust me. Anyways, since you were wondering, I'm fine. The guys are just sitting around playing cards. I'm tucked in the corner with my notebook. Sweetheart, penning a sonnet about my undying love at a time like this, I'm flattered. <laughs> An elegy at the moment. I feel like if I don't keep myself busy doing something, I'll go crazy locked up down here. I know what you mean, hon. I'll let you get back to it. I love you. I love you too, babe. And that's all of us. Everyone else was either topside during the event, or they were killed in the breach. Director's orders are to stay put, keep an eye on the cams both in and around the facility. We've got the 001 skips beating at our front door. God knows what else is locked in here with us. We still have electricity, we should for quite some time. The place is stocked with enough supplies to last the site a couple of years. We're going to be fine for now. Everything's going to be fine. Revision 512, updated 1202 days ago. Item SCP-001. Object Class, Apollyon. Special Containment Procedures. No change. Description. No change. Opening attached file. Access granted. They've just been sitting out there this entire time, calling to us, begging for us to come outside. The noise drew more of them. There's this one mass that I'm Sure must, must have a few dozen people and God knows how many animals rolling around inside it. Screams and bleats and screeches and howls non-stop, louder than all hell. The worst ones make this disgusting moaning, like they're actually enjoying it. They're not going to leave so long as they know we're down here. We managed to talk one of the D's into going out, see if he couldn't draw them away. He was surprisingly okay with the plan, all he asked for was a gun and a single round. He made it out there, and one got hold of him, tried to get his mask off. He managed to work the pistol up beneath his chin in time, got it off. I figured he was lucky. After he fell limp though, it kept working in his suit, 
cried off the hood, poured itself inside, began tearing it off him from within. He came back, started changing, dripping out of the suit and screaming and screaming and screaming. They won't even let us die. The director has a plan. There's an escape tunnel hidden in his office. Tram under the site will take us to a safe house. We should be able to start towards 19 from there. Revision 812, updated 1200 days ago. Item, SCP-001, Abject Class, Apollyon. Special Containment Procedures. No change. Description. No change. Opening attached file. Access granted. You see him for the first time. Dr. Rigotta is seated where you are now. He has a pained look. His eyes are bloodshot. A large, wet, red-black blotch has formed on her breast pocket. He draws a shuddering breath, parts his lips as if to speak, and stops himself. He bows his head and cries silently. After a minute, he manages to choke out. I... I... We... we... The tunnel... I... Flowed in through the... Through the ceiling. Dragging... Dragging them into the... The light and ripping off their... Their clothes and... 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 and. He reaches into his breast pocket and withdraws a finger. The glint of a wedding ring is visible above the severed portion. He holds it close, cupped in his hands, and runs a thumb across the glimmering band. He sits like this for an eternity, whispering apology after apology, begging forgiveness, lost in the moment. He looks up after some time, there's a look of realization. When he sees, he's still recording. Before he places the digit back in his pocket, he leans forward as if to turn off the camera when the radio crackles to life. It broadcasts white noise for a second, and then a voice that sets you on edge. Logan? It's Ari, almost. His voice has taken on a disgusting, gurgling tone characteristic of the affected. Logan's jaw drops. A little colour that was left in his face drains. It speaks out again. Where are you, you? Why can't I get back inside? Are you there? Logan rummages beneath the desk for a moment and produces a handheld radio. His hands are shaking. The thing implores him. Its inhuman speech curdles your stomach. Babe, it's alright. I'm alright, really. It's a bright, sunny day, and you're just wasting away down there. Logan is in tears, his finger hovering just above the call button. The Ari thing draws a deep, wet breath and speaks. Such a beautiful, clear blue sky, just like that day. Do you remember? Logan withdraws a cigarette with his free hand, followed by a pack of matches. His shaking thwarts the first two attempts to light it. He swears silently. Third time's the charm. He inhales a quarter of the thing in a single drag. The Ari thing continues. It was so perfect. Everything was how I'd always dreamt it would be. You planned exquisitely. I never felt so in love. Logan begins rocking back and forth. You even had the band play our song. I feel good, in a special way. I'm in love, and it's a Sunday. 
Logan hurls the radio across the room. It smashes somewhere off camera. It's still somewhat operational. You can hear still thing singing. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. More voices join in the chorus as the radio slowly loses life. A few, a dozen, then more. They continue singing until the radio mercifully dies. Logan rushes out of his chair, and you can hear him vomiting off screen. The video films the empty seat for several minutes before he returns to end the feed. Something isn't right. A lingering, paranoid sensation washes over you. You're being watched. You defensively dart your eyes about, but they take a second to adjust to the darkness beyond the monitor. The emergency light sweeps across the room, stretching and twisting the shadows beyond recognition. That's when you spot it. There, in the corner, coming out of the puddle. Time slows to a halt. A pair of hands coated in the lustrous black slime you followed through the facility are on either side of the sickening pool. As if something beneath the floor is bracing itself, trying to lift itself up. Something inhuman. The head comes next, rising from the muck. Matted hair conceals its face, plastered over by the mystery fluid. It turns in your direction. It stares at you from the corner, which once again falls into darkness. The emergency light continues its journey across the room. It washes over the puddle again, revealing nothing out of the ordinary. Revision 912, updated 986 days ago. Item SCP-001, object class Apollyon. SCP. No change. Description. No change. Opening attached file. Access granted. Dr. Igota appears on the monitor. He's lost weight. His eyes are bloodshot and wide. On a table before him lay a knife, a bowl, and a stack of manila envelopes containing yellow pages. Atop this stack is a single blood-stained parchment. Despite the things we have to deal with here at the Foundation, I've always believed we would be able to maintain control. We would hold the darkness at bay. Let mankind flourish in the light. Site 19 stopped broadcasting last month. It's been getting harder and harder to find reason to keep going, especially without, without. He grabs the knife, contemplates it for a moment. I keep going over it again and again in my mind. That day back at the tunnels, everything that happened. I've gone down there a few times, if only to hear her voice again. But it's wrong. That thing on the other side of the door. It's not. It's not him. Not anymore. It sounds like him. It knows everything he knew. But it's not him. This light. It takes your body. It steals your mind. But what about your soul? With this, he slices into the palm of his left hand, and winces. You watch him cleanse his fist, draining his blood into the bowl. If this works, I can bring back something. Something the light couldn't reach. I'll post an update here. For now, signing off. Revision 484 error. 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 error error updated 985 days ago item object object special containment procedures scp001 contained 
Survivors of the SCP-001 event stationed within secure facilities Personnel. Personnel are encouraged and stop thinking they know better. You can't hide down here forever, love. Personnel exposed to SCP-001. Who you can just abandon. I ask for you to save me. It wasn't your choice to make. Euthan Euthanization is not 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 to be attempted. Conductive electrical weapons have proven partially effective at immobilizing instances. Seem me better off. Incend incendiary weapon. Cryonic munitions are most effective thus far. Personnel stationed at Site 19 have no regrets. Neither did I. It's never too late, babe. Description. SCP-001 is the designation given to the sun. Name free. The effects? The effects are instantaneous, resulting in until you ripped me away. These changes seem scary, I know. Despite this restru- Despite this restructuring, at no point, I promise. Due to their- Due to their composition, instances of SCP-001-A that make contact with one another may combine and blend and f This does not- this does not cause pain. Since the SCP-001 event, most instances have congregated into such collectives, which seem to possess no maximum volume. The resulting biomass is beautiful. The component organisms will shift in and over and around and through and in and out and in and out and in and out. Limbs and bodies hold to go all, all as one before deteriorating and being subsumed by another life form. Collective instances will locomote by just trying to get close to you again. So hard. Let me... Let me in. There's a video file attached. Opening it, you see that it presents the room you're in. The feed seems to be coming from one of the security cameras up in the corner of the room. It's dark, but you can make out Dr. Egotta, laying on a pile of laundry along the far wall. He's writhing in his sleep. He seems tormented, hurt. He's tossing and turning and mumbling nonsense words. The camera shakes. It lifts upward for a moment before it focuses on him again. It starts moving closer slowly. The speakers come to life, picking up an airy, breathy static. As the camera moves closer to the doctor, it becomes clearer, crisper. It's not merely white noise, but dozens, hundreds of voices whispering unintelligibly to one another. You lean in, press your ear almost against the speaker, trying to discern what is being said. Something strange stands out amidst the discordance. Are you paying attention? This next bit is just for you. You're not quite sure what to make of it though. Looking back at the monitor, the camera has come to a halt inches away from the sleeping doctor. The voices stop. There is no sound. A hand, black and oily and skeletal, reaches out for him, brushes away a lock of hair. His eyes shoot open and he recoils in shock. The feed cuts out. Revision 1212 updated one day ago. Item SCP-001, Object Class Apollyon. SCP. No change. Description. No change. Opening attached file. Access granted. Dr. Igotta appears before you on the screen, looking even worse for wear than he did previously. His hair is thinning, with large swathes appearing absent from the middle of his head. If they weren't reflecting in the soft glow of the monitor, you would have assumed he no longer had eyes, for how deep they'd recessed into his skull. He stares ahead, unblinking. Stop. He won't 
pull away. I know I didn't. I know I didn't pick up an info hazard browsing the archives. Tested myself for 4673 infection. Negative. 5189 is the... is the only other one that uses print as a vector. Can't be that. I still have all my fingers. His lips crack into a broken grin. He lets out a weak laugh and displays his trembling hands. What appears to be the mostly skeletal remains of a finger is embedded into the flesh of his left hand, in the stump that would have supported his natural ring finger. Two wedding bands loosely encircle the digit, laying atop one another. So, I'm not infected. I'm not, not, I'm, I'm not crazy. I know, I know the ritual worked. I know it's really him. It's him and he. Something catches his attention off screen. He cocks his head, listening. No, no, I can't. You're not, not you. Not the same, not you. It's not you anymore. No, 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 no. He begins rubbing his temples, repeating himself over and over again. A minute passes. He snaps his head back up and addresses the camera. It's... it's him, but it's not. What I brought back, it's still part of O1. There's no way. No way out. No way. There's no hope of a future for me. And God, I can't go on like this any longer. I'll be safe here. The light can't reach me. I won't let it take me. He brandishes a handgun. Well, was planning on using this till I found some, some leftover meds. I don't want to, I don't want to risk calling attention to my, sir, to my body. He opens the desk drawer and deposits the firearm. He raises his gaze, stares into the camera. Mom? Dad? Ari? I'm sorry. He reaches forwards and ends the recording. That's horrible. Did it have to end like that? You open the drawer, pull out the gun. You absent-mindedly turn it over in your hands for a moment, wondering where you'll go from here. Site 17? 64? Surely you can't be all that's left. The computer dings. There's been an update to the file? Access SCP-001, current iteration, updated one minute ago. Item. Raise the blazing sun. A chance encounter. All good displays. One day, my love, we be as one. Object class. Object class. Mind. A set course, begun that frenetic, wild, lustrous haze, as your skies host the radiant sun. Special containment procedures. Beaming as we run down that aisle of fervent craze, that day, my love, we became as one. With future unfolded, the life we'd won. Commitment and duty. Cerulean skies ferry the shimmering sun. 
description. Shackled by fate, overrun by ever-growing resent and malaise. Yesterday, my love, we were as one. Now you lie here, the life in you gone. In the dark, outside of her rays. Crimson skies bear the torch, our sun. Today, my love, will be as one. System error. Without prompting, the page begins playing a video file. You freeze when the image loads. It's a live feed, looking down on you from behind, about a foot away. A skeletal, inky left hand enters the frame, approaching you at a snail's pace, missing its ring finger. Without a second thought, you turn and fire in a frenzy, hoping to drive off the spectre. Your bullets meet an empty wall. There's nothing there. A second passes before you hear it, before you hear them. Sloshing, wet thuds coming down the corridor, accompanied by a chorus of screams. It slams into the door. Could there be a place to hide? It shrieks a second time. What appears to be a face, part human, part something, dribbles in under the frame. Bits of flesh from God knows what oozes in through the sides and reconstitutes into fingers, eyes, feathers. A third. Now it's pressing up against the wood, causing it to sag inwards. With a groan and a crash, the wood splinters. The door explodes open. Hands and arms stretch out of the mass, pulling you up, passing you from one to the next, on and on down the line. They drag you past the empty containment units, upward and through the stairwell, through the halls and toward the tunnel. You're afforded a few precious moments in the darkness, and at the end of the tunnel, there is light. <laughs>